Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jerzy Baranowski and I wanted to welcome you to a new video for uh, Bayesian Data Analytics because as you can still hear I have some issues with my voice I will be uh, compiling this video using last year's um, lectures using some momentarily heavy editing uh, Currently we have updated all the Video, uh, all the Jupyter notebooks regarding those lectures that are being left on GitHub to be in using common standby uh, and the changes are surprisingly limited regarding to the original notebooks so generally you can ignore the aspects when I'm talking about common stand, uh, about PyStan and just look at the code uh, where I'm using common stand and really it uh, reduces to changes few lines and certain arguments are called differently but the changes are not substantial and uh, I think that this way you will be at least <coughs> be able to uh, get some lectures until I get fully healthy to record something new more substantial so we will divide the, uh, the topic will be divided into three parts we each of the those will have my brief introduction and then we will move in time to me a year ago. Thank you very much. We are going to STAN. STAN is a statistical modeling language, one of few that are currently available. It offers full Bayesian statistical inference with uh, Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo chain Monte Carlo sampling using either uh, no uterine sampling or Hamiltonian Monte Carlo uh, algorithms or offers approximate Bayesian inference with variational uh, inference, which is at the moment in experimental stage, and penalized maximum likelihood estimation with optimization, so finding the mode of the distribution. Generally, STAN is a very interesting uh, language, which is written in C++, and this C++ which is covered by a certain level of abstraction that you use language of STAN to create your model, which generally gives a relatively simple code, which is then being changed into the C++ code, which is then compiled and called from either Python or R or uh, even command line in order to... Generally, we will be today we will be focusing on uh, Monte Carlo methods. However, STAN is an acronym. STAN was named after Stanislav Ulam, uh, one of the creators of Monte Carlo methods, who worked in Los Alamos developing atomic bombs. Stanislav Ulam was a... Uh, a Polish mathematician and uh, or physicist, and he has a great contributions toward the probability theory and applied statistics. And also, he was inventor of a concept of the most amazing space drive ever, called impulse drive. Impulse drive is a, in a most basic idea, a concept of flying through a space by dropping behind you atomic bombs. Those bombs explode and push your spaceship front. This method at the moment is the only one that conceptually allows us to approach the accelerations that will make us close in the fractions of speed of light that are like reasonable fractions of speed of light. So this is the, in the concept, the only method that potentially can work, of course, it's amazing by itself by just flying, by throwing atomic bombs behind you. So, Stanislav of Ulam was amazing. His work was recognized, especially in the aspect of creating the creating a Stan language and naming it after him. Uh, Stan, uh, in Stan, we create probabilistic models using Stan language, which are converted to the code and we compile it. And, uh, of course, we can use it in multiple ways. There are multiple packages that we, we can use. In case of uh, Python, we have PyStan, which uh, calls uh, uh, models directly from Python in order to perform the compilation process and in order to perform, uh, uh, perform the uh, uh, the simulation was and data handling. However, there's a different option, command standby, uh, which is uh, the command stand is a, is a frame a, a wrapper for stand that allows you to use it from command line in uh, either Windows or Linux uh, systems or uni generally Unix systems, where you can uh, put this, uh, where you can call this uh, the system, uh, uh, your, call your models from directly from the command line. So it will be compiled, it will be the, uh, the, uh, sim the sampling will occur, and then you, your 
results, your samples will be recorded in a CSV file, which you can handle later. And there is a command stand pi wrapper on command stand, which allows you to do it from Python by like not going using uh, CSV files as an intermediate of your data, handling your data, and, uh, instead of using computer memory as an intermediate of handling your data for from sampling. So it is attractive and it's a bit faster than Python, and perhaps later we will all show you how it works. And generally, Stan uh, language is relatively simple in its concept that its uh, programs consist of up to seven data blocks. Uh, functions, which consist of decla function declarations and definitions, data, which defines how the data we are providing it behaves, so what kind of variables there are, what are the dimensions, uh, transform data, or if we want to do something with this data, parameters, so the parameters of our model, and which we define them, what kind of ranges they uh, take, what kind of types there are, the integers, or the floats, or the uh, and of course, we can do can do something with those parameters using transform parameters block, uh, which is then useful for, uh, for example, creating uh, parameters from. Uh, we will show it later today. And uh, the main meat of this uh, well, uh, of this program is of course the model, which specifies what kind of probability distributions or logarithms of those probability distributions are consisting of our in our uh, in our model. And uh, after that we can use generated quantities block. Generated quantities is a block that allows us uh, allows us to perform extra operations. So for example, we can do something with the parameters that we've obtained from our model. We can use them to sample. So for example, create a uh, posterior predictive distribution or even with, uh, with eliminating model we can use it just to create a prior predictive distribution, which we will do in a moment. And generated quantities generally allow us to create extra statistics or extra samples of something that is not directly part of the model. For example, our model, our focus of our model is to compare the data to the parameters through likelihood function. But it can be also used to, uh, but generated quantities can be used to create a posterior predictive uh, distribution. And uh, continuing that, we will come back to the uh, example that we did on during our lecture, which was globe tossing. Uh, generally, we wanted to estimate the water coverage of a planet by random sampling of its surface, like in a Mass Effect, when you come to the in Mass Effect Two or Mass Effect Three, you come to the orbit of the planet and you drop the probe to check the levels of water. Uh, we didn't use Mass Effect during the lecture, we used a squishy ball, which was uh, on the surface was painted as a globe uh, with an Earth map, and uh, throwing that ball, we were catching it and catching the... Uh, and, ca uh, and Catcher, using his right, uh, right thumb, uh, checked whether it was on water or not. I cannot demonstrate you the ball because it is quarantined at, at GH at the moment in my office. So, one of the losses of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so, what we were doing? We were throwing, uh, uh, throwing the ball, we collected some data, and we've used the binomial model that related our measurements, so how many points covered water, uh, covering water, uh, were in all our our trolls. And this was our likely uh, our uh, likelihood of our our model. So this was this was our model that we could use for the uh, uh, for this feature. And we will now analyze this model using Stan. And so, so, so at first I wanted to show you what kind of workflow I'm using in order to or to or let's say tool more tool chain than workflow uh, of uh, Python that I'm using for Python and standard I'm using for uh, for this uh, for for this work. So, first of all, during recent perturbation with my macOS Catalina, I'm switched fully to Conda uh, in order to analyze the system. I'm not using Anaconda uh, Navigator. I'm using Conda environments, and I created a special environment directly for this course, and it's called lectures. So in order to do this, I activate the 
maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. A bit bigger font, so maybe it's more visible. Uh, Conda activate lectures. We will be using terminal later, so you can see what's going on in the. Uh, so now we are in lectures, and in this lectures environment, I'm using Jupyter Lab, which is. You cannot use it for uh, slides, which I was using uh, d during our lectures with Rise environment. So they were sent a JavaScript environment for that. And uh, I'm using uh, Jupyter Lab because it allows, for example, simple copying and pasting between, between tabs. I am also using Atom Editor, uh, which is uh, the editor that was developed by GitHub. And uh, uh, Atom is. Uh, uh, is an editor you can add folders as a project. You can see your Jupyter notebooks there, but not very well. And you can also see the uh, uh, and also you can you can see the uh, the code. And uh, I'm using Atom because Atom is very nice for the purpose of writing codes instead. Because uh, someone wrote a plugin for Atom that calls the uh, syntax of uh, of style and gives uh, certain code snippets that may, make it a little bit easier. But code snippets are so li uh, are limited, so no no um, magic can happen. Either way, we have our model, uh, which is uh, let's say uh, like f we have our model in style. We have our uh, our Jupyter, Jupyter notebook that we'll be working in. Uh, the one thing I wanted to note, uh, note about the uh, about uh, the material, of course, all these things will be available to you uh, in the GitHub repository uh, on the day of lecture, uh, where lecture this lecture becomes public. And uh, I am using generally multiple normal packages like uh, Sys package or Pystan, RVs, Matplotlib. Uh, NumPy SciPy, which generally I might, might be using on my uh, my not. Oh, I see. I have, I have here a duplicate of duplicate of import, which is not very good thing to do. However, not very not very terrible. Certain graphics settings for good visibility. And what we are doing, we are we will try to predict our from our data our uh, our uh, our model. So our model, as we've said before, is the uh, is the unlikelihood of binomial distribution as shown on the slide. So we have our binomial likelihood. And uh, this binomial likelihood, we can see... Let's start with prior predicted distribution. This is generally a good way to start when analyzing all of the uh, Bayesian models. Let's see how our prior information relates to what we know about our system. Is our model that we're considering, so we are like doing even the first checks of our code, is our model consistent with what makes sense? Is, for example, sampling of model will result only is zeros and ones, or probability of the uh, model uh, of, uh, of water coverage will be between zero and one. So, because this is what we are interested. Theta is how much water is on the surface. One, it will be all water. Zero, no water. So, generally, a certain media. And we start with a non uh, informative uniform prior. So, we assume that any value between zero and one is equally likely. So, we will be using uniform uh, probability for our, uh, for our model. So, uh, how do we do that? We will do that. Uh, we start with this prior uh, probability distribution. And we use uh, we write it in Stan. It's written here in, in Atom, or we can just see it in the uh, Jupyter. We can also do a compilation by creating a, a file in Jupyter, write it as uh, a string, or as a flow of uh, stream of text, text, and then write it to a file and collect from there. But I think that's a bit much. Uh, I just calling here the model so we can see what kind of model we will be compiling, so everything is visible here. And what we start with the most simple aspect, data, so our input information, which will be how many tos tosses of the globe will be executing. So we will be trying how many times tossing the globe, we will get right results. And 
we have our model, which has uniform distribution of theta and binomial, distribu uh, uh, binomial uh, random generator as our data generating model. And what we are doing here, we are doing prior, uh, uh, prior predictive distribution, which, of course, in the formula form looks terrible. However, what we actually are doing, we are sampling theta from its distribution, and then we use this theta in the likelihood model in order to sample y's. So sequentially, we perform that information. Collecting y samples, we get the, uh, and analyzing the mass distribution, we perform the market analyzation by simulation. So generally, we don't have to do this integration. We just sample thetas. And then those thetas are used to sample from the binomial, so how many water coverages will hit. Having this model, we can then use our uh, standard utility function compare model in order to create the, this model. So I'll just run all those, uh, all those things all together, so we'll have the... Uh, we will be able to do some uh, to observe how it is everything works. Of course, first uh, first version always takes a lot of time because of uh, because of uh, importing packages, and we are on the fresh environment as you've seen before. Uh, however, like uh, I will be able to show you how the samplings look like in the uh, terminal window. This is one of the advantages of using this uh, such form of Conda environment instead of Anaconda Navigator, because when you call your Jupyter from Anaconda Navigator, your console will be hidden. You have no, no access to how the code hits, at least on, on Unix systems. On Windows, probably it's different. So again, we can check again, is our model the same? Yes, it's the same. Uh, so uh, we can now perform the compilation. Fortunately, the compilation, uh, the model is cached, so we don't have to do it again. And we will be performing our first sampling from the Monte Carlo distribution. We have our console here, so we can see what's going on. And what we'll be doing? We'll be doing something uh, non-standard at the moment. With Stan, we'll be using algorithms called fixed parameters, because we will not be trying to estimate the parameters. We will just be using them. Uh, we're just using, we're using Stan as a glorified uh, random number generator. So we'll be using only one Markov chain and we will do 1000 iterations. And uh, what is important, what's our data? Data in Stan is being transferred to the, uh, has to be transferred in a consistent form with the data block and has to be submitted through, uh, to, uh, from Python as a dictionary. So you create a dictionary that calls all the variables as in the block. We'll see it later in more, a more complicated example. And assign them value. You can use either explicitly or you can write it down in using, uh, you can write it down using dict function, which we'll be using, also use, doing later. So during our lecture, we have verified with lecture notes, we did 11, uh, 11 rows. So let's repeat that and we'll just throw Let's, assuming that we don't know about anything about our globe, we're just throwing it thousand times. Uh, we've performed thousand experiments of throwing the ball eleven times, and we just count how, uh, with every every time the ball was random. So the coverage of water was randomized. So we just checked how many uh, how it would look. Like. So what we are doing here, we are performing this uh, this simulation and. Uh, it was not very complicated. Uh, we've uh, our first iteration and uh, up to a thousand iteration was very simple sampling. It took a uh, stand very little time. It took what less than one thousand uh, one, uh, than one uh, than two thousands of of seconds. So not so much. All all the sampling. We didn't do any warm up, which will be covering later. Okay. So we have our parameters. We can then do something with them. Our uh, model, called with the method sampling, creates our result of the our result of our uh, our uh, simulation or our fitting process, and this structure, this object has to be 
transfer into some kind of data, uh, use, useful data. And to do that, we can transform it into an other dictionary called params, or we want, using the extract method. And you do it by uh, performing uh, following uh, following steps. So uh, we uh, our two we have our two variables from our model. Our model used parameters theta and how many successes so simulated successes as sim from the binary distribution. So we'll have two parameters and then we just do plotting stuff. We're creating histograms for that again in order to so you can see that we everything is, is okay. We create our uh, two models. I am not plotting values on the axis of those uh, uh, histograms. Why? Because we are in, uh, generally we are using normalized histograms and what is important that in the entire area the probability distribution should integrate to one. Depending on the scale what's happening here, those values might be big or large and comparing them is irrelevant. Generally the shape is what we are interested in more than anything else. So what we are doing uh, doing here, we are having we are sampling our uh, our distribution from the uh, we are sampling our, our distribution uh, and we get uniform distribution of theta and generally uniform distribution of number of successes depending on the number of successes. If we had more samples, it will be more uh, it will be more more even. All depends on. Uh, also, changing the numbers of bins also change, changes changes stuff uh, because here we have from I think we might have one bin too little, which is possible. Let's see how it will work. With. No, no, it was okay. Uh, so changing the number of bins also also is relevant. So here we have either from from zero up to eleven successes. That can uh, happen here, and again, sampling uh, is generally kind of uniform. Our prior was a uniform distribution, so on the zero interval. So generally, we expected that not knowing uh, that sampling multiple uh, balls with different uh, uh, different theta, we will get varying numbers of success, which should be also rather uniform distributed. However, here we have counts of integers. Here we have just values between zero and one. So uh that's our our main idea uh our uh, uh having that we can see that our model is generally consistent with what we were expecting from starting from uh non uh, non informative uniform prior we've sampled every results are generally make sense so there are no problems with too little or too, uh, or too, much, uh, too many successes. Some, there is no problem of systematic skewing, for example, getting too many zeros and ones. For example, if you get too little bins, some strange things might, ha might happen, and changing the number of bins, for example, will result that you will get 11, uh, one bin will be much higher. And it's not a problem issue of being it, uh, of being uh, non uniform. Or if you get ten of them, it's even even funnier because then you have two spikes here. But it happens that because our interval between zero and eleven is then divided into, for example, ten bins, and those ten bins are not necessarily consistent with the uh, the uh, getting values zero and one, and here you have ten and eleven, so they are like doubled with respect to others. That's why you have to have twelve in this case twelve of them because that's many possibilities you have. So in order to analyze uh, results with integers, with histograms, you need to be aware how many bins there are and how many uh, how many things are possible because otherwise there will be unexplainable behavior. So you have to verify how many integers land in each bin. So this is something that you should be aware when doing histograms of integer valued. Uh, uh, integer valued uh, uh, distributions. So, okay. Conclusion is that everything kind of works. We are not uh, doing more uh, detailed analysis. We will go it, uh, to it later. And uh, then we go, let's say, create a model that will allow us to infer the values of theta. Because before, we had so, well, we just checked the prior. Now, we want to tag, take our model and we want to estimate the 
we want to estimate our uh, our model from the uh, from uh, we want to est est estimate parameters of our model uh, using using stand from our collected data. As, if you somebody remembers, we had seven successes on the eleven tries. So we created our new model. I think I here did something something nasty, and but maybe we'll see how the compilation uh, compilation works because I've left a comment here which doesn't look pretty. So uh, let's get rid of it and have our model. Our model now is more fleshed, more things happen. First of all, our data block now includes not only number of trials, but also number of successes. So this is our first information here. Because now we will try to get theta, so, part, so find, find, find the distribution with theta, uh, of theta that's conditional on, uh, on the uh, outputs, in all, all the number of successes in order to get our uh, proper uh, our, uh, to in order to estimate the, uh, the values of data and what we are doing here, what Stan is doing actually, Stan will be creating a joint distribution of theta and number of successes, and this joint distribution will be sampled using Hamilton and Monte Carlo. And again, this is something that we'll cover later. And having that information, we will be able to extract the conditionals on theta or marginalized distributions so or do stuff like that. So now we have parameters. This parameter theta is something that we want to infer. Mind that despite that Python does not use semicolons, Stan uses semicolons. So we have to uh, take care about that. So our parameters now, we have uh, defined a parameter theta, which is bounded from 0 and 1. Uh, from lower from zero, upper from one, and this parameter will be scripted in model. And here, how it works, we will discuss uh, in our lectures two types of specificating uh, models of uh, uh, stuff. This is called a sampling statements. We specified what kind of uh, theta, uh, what kind of distribution theta is sampled from, and then what kind of distribution s, so our number of successes. Is sampled from so we will be having this is our likelihood so how data is distributed to what distribution so theta is sampled from beta distribution but how look at that in generated quantities before we used uh, random generators here we use the sampling statement of the function you should verify it how, look at it how it looked like in stand manual which is of course available on the stand website so we are sampling theta from beta 1-1 one, one distribution. Beta 1-1 one, one is otherwise no, known as uniform distribution. So this is we could use uniform here, but like just for consistency, beta distribution is a conjugate prior for minimal distribution. Uh, so it's useful for uh, analytic analysis of the reference, and this is something that we did on the previous lecture. So that's why we're doing consistency with that. And uh, it was easy because beta distribution in this case is easy because it's interpretable easily as previous results. So how many successes we had before in how many tries. And again, as so our observed measurements will be uh, sampled from the binomial parameterized by n, our other data point, and theta, uh, theta parameter that is distributed uniformly. And already having that model, we don't have to create a separate model. We having this fit, we can also uh, so taking samples from this joint distribution, we can also generate additional uh, additional number of samples uh, using the uh, binomial RNG. So for this set of parameters, what kind of uh, uh, samples we can simulate? So this again will be performed multiple number of times. Will be just something uh, you, during our uh, Monte Carlo computation, we will have our model, uh, we'll, we'll be sampling from this model and using those samples, we'll already have theta available and was given, so we'll be able to simulate what kind of S is simulated with theta. If uh, theta are sampled from the proper regions of probability distribution, and that's what proper Monte Carlo methods like Stan do, then we have the, uh, we will have our distribution and we have samples that are rep uh, representative towards our distribution. 
And what we are doing here now, we will be uh, compiling our model. And this compilation will take time because I've changed it uh, before. So let's run it. And oh no, uh, fortunately I've changed it in a way that wasn't relevant because of removing the comments. So just uh, we're using the cached mo the model and nothing happens. Okay, so what we are doing now, we are creating our new data structure, our data dictionary for our uh, for our model. Here we need two variables, s number of successes and number of trials. This time we are using the uh, dict function, which is uh, has a slightly different syntax than uh, calling uh, the dictionary directly, but the general result is the same. And we will be performing sampling for our model. Uh, so again, I'm opening the terminal because here something will be happening. So let's run the sampling. So our model that we've compiled before is samp sampling, we're performing sampling, this time without these fixed params methods. We are, however, specifying a seed, so it will be replicable what we are observing, and using our da uh, data that we defined above. So let's do it. What's going on? We are, by default, creating four Monte Carlo chains of the uh, Monte Carlo, uh, Monte Carlo, individual, independent Monte Carlo chains of our uh, Markov chains of our, our model. Those Markov chains consist of 1,000 transitions of warm-up and 1,000 transitions of actual sampling. The idea is that for those more automatic control friendly is that uh, we have uh, this Markov chain that tends toward the, a proper area of probability distribution and wanders in the proper way around it. Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which is a default instance, is a way of keeping the situation proper that this, um, uh, this Markov chain will wander in through the right areas of probability distribution. And and this mod, uh, and having that, we are able to uh, uh, to get enough samples. However, warm up is used in order to get in the right area of distribution, and then the thousand samples is used to just get those samples that will be represented. So, what we having here? Here, Stan is giving us information for each of those iterations. Our gradient evaluation took around uh, 3.5 times 10 to minus 5 seconds. So, 1000 transitions using 10 steps per transition would take uh, 0 0.35 seconds. So, less than one second to get 1000 samples from this area. This is an information for us how long it will take. So, uh, and this is to do it for each of those Markov chains individually. As you can see, there is certain variation of how this great innovation uh, is looking because, of course, computer is working in the background here, so you don't see what's going on. This, uh, uh, so all our chains are starting with iteration one of warm up, and you get this information of what's going on. So every 200, inter uh, uh, 200 inter uh, iterations, you get additional information of warm -up. when you hit 50%, so the thousand samples are left behind, we start sampling. So from sample 1001 to 2000, the sampling is occurred, and you then get information how long each of those uh, things uh, took time, and as you can see, it was relatively simple. Uh, so our entire process took us less than one second, even looking at that, probably printing of that took more time than the entire computation. Uh, why four Markov chains? First of all, in order to ensure proper mixing that you get enough information, but also because most of pro no, modern computers have four cores, which I didn't use. We will be doing some more advanced computation. I will show you how the process looks like from the status monitor from my system. So you will see that all cores are occupied, and then, like, you see that your computer is really working. But, um, because, but how I am recording here, so things are happening so in the background. So there will be a lot of variation here, what's going on. Then what we are doing, we've sampled the signal. We can then, using standard utility, we can check all diagnostics and get we get some magic information that you don't know what's going on. NF is a, a number of effective samples per iteration. So 
Uh, this is something we don't know, don't know what's going on. R hat is a certain diagnostics function that's used to check if the Markov chains are mixing properly. Uh, none, no of the iterations ended with a divergence. This is something we will cover later. Divergences are a uh, situation when our uh, Markov chain, instead of wandering around the proper place, it's called typical set of the distribution, goes away because of this distribution has a very nasty curvature. This is something like stiff differential equations, that differential equations sometimes become unstable and go away. And generally what we are doing instead, we are solving differential equations, certain differential equations that are wandering in the proper way around the Bobby distribution, but this we'll cover later. And uh, we have also no, uh, no saturation of maximum three depths of 10, so uh, wandering. And also another diagnostic, no pathologies. Everything is nice. All those diagnostics we will discuss later. What we are doing now, we are doing our parameters, we extract them and we will do the... Uh, we will get our parameters. So what is... I wanted to highlight, specify the seed. You can use any number here, but just use it consistently for a set of experiments that you are doing. So when something weird will happen, you will be able to replicate it. If you don't go specify seeds, then you get the results that vary from each situation. If you specify the seed, then generally you will get the same situation. So your samples will be identical. If you have a situation that you drop into the very pathological problem, well, that, that happens. But uh, and, but like generally, this will be a signal of more complicated issue behind because it's rather not possible that actually one seed will result in very specific behavior because numerical rounding will take care of that. Such situations are too unstable to, to be left with. So specify seeds and that. So again, we are doing some visualization and now we have some information because Using our data of seven seconds per eleven, uh, we can now uh, we can see now you know histograms how situation looks like. First of all, as we can see, the number of seven successes is relatively consistent with prior predictive uh, distribution. So, use having such data, our model says theta has a distribution like this. Its median is around zero point sixty two. And its 94% uh, probability uh, uh, density is maybe I should run those things just to be just to be honest. I think uh, not nothing not much should change because of the seeds. Not like just you can, so we can see that everything is is okay. Uh, what we have here we have here a situation that some big problem model uh, the prior is now. Uh, covered by likelihood, so getting from our samples, we have a mode around the value of C2, again similar to median, I maybe sh should have marked it here. <coughs> Either way, uh, we have information of successes, possible successes, and we have the information of... Uh, so we can get the prob highest probability density in interval of like 94% of probability, is located between 0 0.38 and 0 0.86. Why 0 0.94? Because there is no specific number that makes any really sense. The in classical literature you will see 95% probability intervals, but they are nothing differing from 94 or 96 or 99, at least conceptually, in the Bayesian context. 95% is a number, and just you don't have to stick to it just to be consistent. What kind of probability intervals you are interested in? So. We have our uh, we have our prior uh, our model here. We get the results, and I will show you now how easily we can change that because we from what we have did here we have used non-informative prior distribution. We generally repeated the results from the, uh, from the lecture, but without we weren't using sample uh, uh, grid approximation. We sampled from the uh, from the uh, directly from the distribution using Stan, so we won't be uh, using such. We, we can use normal optimized code that will work for that. But we can change our model because why not? And uh, we can change our model uh, in a way that will allow us to change the prior distribution. Maybe 
we have some more information. Maybe we have information about how the uh, how the distribution looks. I see that I haven't put the right model here, so we'll just do it here. So we can again uh, we can check our uh, change our model by using the changing the probability distribution and we have the model co uh, called prior normal which generally changes in a way that uh, we have the uh, we have the model of uh, uh, we are assuming normal distribution of theta now theta is distributed with normal distribution with mean of 0 0.5 and uh, uh, sigma well, or the standard deviation of 0 0.15. And what's happening here? Because this is, looks, looks weird. In order to sample a parameter that is bounded from normal distribution, we will have to do certain tricks. And in this case, we will have to guarantee that even our if our model, which guarantees that 99%, so free sigma of it, is between 0 0.05 and 0, uh, 0 point. At 95, because that's how normal distribution works, we have a risk of getting a tailed value from one of the other boundary outside of 0, 1 distribution. So, in order that, we have to guarantee that our model... Okay, so what we are doing here, we just put the bounds of that every, that our value will be bounded from, up from 1 and uh, bounded... Uh, and result will be taken absolute value, so uh, we will not getting the values from under zero. So generally, we introduce certain very limited numerical uh, changes in the simulation, but we don't care about it too much, and that would not be a problem in the simulation. So for prior predictive distribution, we just have to do like, do like this. If our model needs a positive parameter or bounded parameter, we need to ensure that it will be bounded. And for that, we're using function minimum. So we are taking minimal value either one or value from the distribution. And uh, we take the uh, absolute value from that. So from zero, values below zero are not, not covered. So uh, having that, uh, we have, uh, we are able to compile our model. Again, model is cached, so it's not a problem. We're doing the same situation as before. So having this model, we are sampling from it with a seed, with uh, one chain, with fixed parameter algorithm. So generally, we're doing exactly the same situation, but the model is now is different. So the model has different prior distribution for theta. And something happened. Again, it was very simple uh, because it was uh, it wasn't inference, but was much simpler as the distribution, just no, no random number generation. And we can plot the distribution. Again, here, we are plotting prior predictive distribution. So how our model behaves with respect to our prior knowledge. And our prior knowledge says that our parameter theta, it should be distributed normally. And looking like that, it is, because prior is consistent with what we sampled from our prior predictive distribution. And because of that, our number of successes also should be approximately normal. At least we expect that most of the successes will be around the uh, the half of uh, the probability because that's that's how we specified our prior. Our prior says around 50-50 of water and not water on our globe with accepted standard deviation of 0 0.15. Uh, of 15%. So this is something that's generally reasonably 99% covers most of the uh, everything except totally uh, dry planets and totally water covered planets. So everything is is okay. So uh, model is consistent. Everything looks nice. Again, remember the number of bins in the histogram for integer values has to be 12. Otherwise, some artifacts may happen. And what we're doing then, we are switching our model. And our model is, again, the changes in only here. We've changed the prior distribution for theta. Everything is all, like the same parameter has the same value. Here, we don't have to specify anything about uh, about this normal distribution because nothing will, really, is ha really is happening. In certain cases, when introducing cutoffs, you have to 
slightly modify your likelihood, but this is not the case. This is the in cases when those cutoffs are dependent on other parameters. So um, in more complicated situation, which we'll maybe show later in some different lecture. And finally, uh, we have our model uh, with the uh, uh, the same situation like we before. Binomial distribution. So successes are sampled from the uh, or should be corresponding to the binomial distribution with parameter theta. And again, we generating get it quantities. So everything looks nice. We can compile this model, which is cached, so no, pro no problem. We call it along with all the diagnostics. Everything is nice. Uh, the sampling also occurred very efficiently without any problems. Um, as you can see, one uh, chain started much later, probably because of something happening in the background of my computer. And we can see how the, uh, those parameters look like with our similar histograms as before. Here we see the effect of that our data is not really consistent with our prior, because our prior at least doesn't uh, enforce the prior as previously. Our prior says theta was in the middle with certain var possible variation. However, our data says no, no, theta should be somewhere else. And uh, because the data says so. Our experiments, uh, we had seven successes, not six, uh, not, not between five and six successes on the 11 trials. So generally, we have a situation. As you can see, it looks very similar to the uh, to the pre previous result. We can also check what is how our uh, to the to the result from the uh, uniform distribution. We can check our uh, we can check how our uh, models look like. I think something is probably blocked by the recording. So I just copy. I think that Jupyter Lab doesn't like to be recorded. So let's plot the median of theta. I compute the median of theta. Median is uh, 0 0.62. Uh, generally, as before, uh, with like changes on the for the place uh, behind behind the comma and the density. Interval is here, and again, it's it's very very similar. So our prior information was not supported by that, but on the other hand, our prior does not did not forbade that. Oh no, no, it's not exactly 0.5. No, it's 0.5, probably 0.5, but might be somewhere somewhere else. Like in on 67 uh, percent, it will be in the interval of between. Uh, 0 from 45, uh, 35 to uh, 0 0.65, and this is consistent with, with us. So our prior was, uh, we, we've moved away from our prior, followed by likelihood. If our prior was somewhere here and located our problem here, we would have much more problems. We'll have inconsistency between prior and the data that is happening here. But this is not, not the case here. Our model, as you can see, very simple model, can be created very simply in STAN, uh, I haven't opened you the fit in here, but you've seen it before. Four simple blocks. All these results are here. So this is something that we had at the moment for this part of our, our lecture. And uh, we'll see you again at the next one parameter model. We'll uh, focus, uh, which we'll, I think we'll move to the next video because this one is approaching an hour or even more. So we'll see you in the next video.